We're going to see how long I can stay on the today. podcast. So, <laughs> um, the one of the vagaries of living Panama is a little key. So, uh, but this is the third try trying to do this particular episode. There is something in energy on this one uh, that is, is uh, really pushing back. So, we're, we're talking about the Valkyries today, and we've got Kathy on the call with us again, which I'm so excited because we've gotten a lot of Kathy recently. Yeah, which she was gone for a long time. And then, you know, now she's back a whole bunch. So that's super awesome. Uh, so it's just for you guys to get a chance to, if you came in in the last, you've only been listening from this way, place forward, you're really getting to know Kathy. But if you were here from the beginning, you know, she's been doing the mythology series with us for the whole time. And so uh, this is this is no different. This was actually Kathy's idea, this particular episode. And that came out of, do you want to tell the story about the uh, the um, Constellation workshop that you did, that this, this story idea came out of? The Constellation? Sure. Um, it, We've talked about constellation work in the past on this. Um, <clears throat> uh, just briefly, it is uh, work where clients present with a particular issue generally tends to be a generational issue. We uh, work with representational energies in a field um, and attempt to realign those energies so that uh, everything lines up, gets into flow, and life goes on well for the client. Um, we were doing yeah. one of those constellations for a client. And um, there was uh, Valkyrie representational energy in the field because there was a big, uh, it, it, it was, it, there was like Holocaust energy in the field, which we never ask any personal person to stand in because that's just far too traumatic, right? Um, only it wasn't Holocaust energy. It was just big, bad trauma abuse energy. And so the Valkyries came in, we had two Valkyries come in and stood guard over the over the energy and then when it, the energy needed to leave the room they they marched over they took it and they opened the door and they kicked it yeah. down the stairs uh, it was totally josh was saying action. before we started on the call that uh so his knowledge um, of batteries and we before said, we know, were this really episode was powerful use. feminine energetic protection kind of stuff going on with that and uh, the person who channeled it most clearly um, really took some of that energy with her, not, not from the constellation, but just having tapped into the Valkyrie archetype as um, strengthening her and um, helping her to stand up more for herself in her own life. So it was, it was a very cool um, process. And we said, well, hey, maybe we ought to talk about Valkyries. So that's how we got here. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's right. I, you know, I heard we were going to be, you know, taping this one, and I was excited because first of all, I just want to say Kathy is one of my favorite guests on the podcast. You know, I've I've loved listening to the Crowley one, um, the the one on the ancestor healing or ancestral work, and you know, the constellation work, and it, it's just it's just an honor to be sharing the the space with her today. And I have to say. It's so funny how a lot of this stuff lines up because it was almost three years to the day I came into the Welcome to the Woo program, and it was actually Kathy who was in my very first call. So I am uh, I am excited to be here in the room because I just love how the universe lines things up over and over again. It never really ceases to amaze me. But yeah, my my extensive knowledge of the Valkyries it lays strictly within my watching of the Thor series and specifically the, the last <laughs> Thor movie. So I'm excited to be here and, and learn a little bit more about it. You know, the little bit I did study that I, I, I had seen that they were kind of the ones that chose, you know, they were kind of like the high priestesses of Odin. Is that, is that correct, Kathy? Uh, <clears throat> not so much a priestess because priestesses tend to worship the gods that they are in service yeah. to. <clears throat> The Valkyries were sort of the military arm <laughs> of Odin. Okay, they were uh, they were sent into battle, and they were 
they, they call them maidens because this is Old Norse, so they don't tend to refer to priestesses, but they, um, they call them maidens who served Odin. And um, they were sent to the battlefields to choose the slain who were worthy of a space in Valhalla. Valhalla being sort of the, the Norse, uh, I really hesitate to say heaven because that sort of, to me, <laughs> takes some of the energy out of Valhalla. <clears throat> Valhalla was a warrior's heaven with drinking and, you know, training and, you know, all that other good stuff. And um, the reason that they were chosen, I mean, the, the criteria for choosing them was when they went to Valhalla that they were in training for Ragnarok. So they weren't just up there partying all the time. I mean, they, they had that party component to it, but they were, um, they were the ultimate end of the world warriors because Ragnarok is the Norse end of the world kind of thing. Um, it's interesting that they were maidens of Odin as a god, because Odin was the one who threw his eye into the other world so he could be, he could see in both worlds. So he was, he had the capacity of, of psychic sight, if you want to call that, of sight into other worlds because of the sacrifice of his eye to otherworldliness for viewing. So um, this is this so is I, I of, do have a, a comment, way, it's, which it's is, you know, battle oriented, we, we talk about mythology from the perspective sense. of, you know, we um, understand how spirit talks to us and, you, and having mythos knowledge it gives spirit another language to you know, not another favor. avenue to speak to us through. Uh, so if but you're out there's the also benefits mythological terms the to understand different over, archetypal you, energies you might not and the how warrior, we can use them you know, the in our lives. So I'm going to throw it back to you and say, how would you use Valkyrie energy in your life to improve your circumstances? based on um, the archetype they were both uh they were referred to as either as both supernatural beings and beings who were um humans with supernatural <laughs> qualities and they could uh basically do the you know valkyrie actually means um chooser of the slain the the word comes together from old norse and so the the word actually comes from uh, the choosing of the slain and they could, they could choose it on land. They could choose it on sea, wherever there was battles happening with the Norse, they could do that. So, um, I'm going to shut up for a minute because otherwise I sound like, you know, here, this is what you can find in Wikipedia. No. And <laughs> say <laughs> any questions or input over here from you guys. <laughs> Well, I don't remember if this is a phrase you used a long time or not. Yeah, ago, so but, um, it sounds an awful it's lot. It's running through my head right now, so it's going to come out of yeah, my mouth. Yeah, sorry, we've got like a piece of my up, internet go. connection, so. Um, actually talk about the so uh, the, the, it sounds a lot, the, the, a lot like the, the mythological aspects of the warrior, Amazonian warriors. Is female who would warrior, to be able to do okay, their, their, is, um, uh, their complete bow badasses, hunting, right? their archery. You know, that's and, the word I'm looking for. Um, um, and um, they are. And if you, going back to the Marvel Universe, no, this is DC, right? It's the Wonder Woman. Going back um, to Wonder and Woman and Amazonian things going on the culture, how uh, which is a mythos, right? So if you're if you're looking at modern day Marvel movies or DC battle, comic movies or Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter, I mean these are all modern right. day fact, mythologies. Um, often uh, but fairness, if we go back to uh, you know they all as well not as all of them, but a lot of them harken back to earlier mythologies, and they're they're updating them. And so you know. 
uh, the Marvel comics or the uh, DC company of uh, the uh, Wonder warrior. Woman because and a lot the of, portrayal uh, of the Amazonian warriors on the island later in the Wonder Woman movies uh, is a soft, uh, very similar sort of representation and to women, the Norse version. You know, so there is likely right, an know, earlier still of those Titanic, mythos. Right? We got to say the, the uh, likely that, probably that back in Sumerian or Babylonian us, you know, times or men. even before and that. And I'm not knocking but, big powerful men. Uh, you know, when you <laughs> see things in cultures in that are, are but there spanning is, this is a multiple cultures, it is a function of that, that being women. a much earlier tale and that was then the split power and, word, and adapted or the power and, of energy, but literally the power of the sword, the power of life and death that they wielded. And so when you step into this archetype, you're really stepping into your warrior self and into your, um, uh, from that standpoint, being totally at the point of choice. And that's power in and of itself. Yeah. No. Well, you know, if you're if if you're a Star Trek fan, the perfect analogy for this is the the Klingon female warriors, because they are just like mm, that is Valhalla energy or Valkyrie energy right there is the women Klingons. It's just like mm. and they would not hand a man a beer to say. <laughs> So, the, um, <laughs> what I said the, was, is, you know, the they would look at you and say, the blood wine's over there. Use your feet. You know? <laughs> is, is that they guard the lives and the no, ships anything. The nope. ships of yeah. those who are dear to them. Crazy. So, but, so their energy, they're not only the choosers and uh, the battle, you know, piece of it um, and the warrior self, but they are, they are guards and protectors. Um, and for whatever reason, and, you know, maybe it's from where they come from, but the energy I tend to think of in that is mama bear, right? Not that they're affiliated with bears, but, you know, you know, not to mess around with mama bears cubs, right? That is, that is a complete no, no. She'll rip you to shreds. Um, so there's a, we have even in nature, the referent archetype of strong, powerful female, right? Guarding and protecting those that they care about and taking out the ones that threaten or, you know, don't fit kind of thing. The, where the Valkyries add that extra piece is um, bringing it up to Valhalla, right? The, the chosen ones. Um, when I was reading it, and uh, I had a friend years ago who told me that a lot of the mythos from Old Norse was salvaged by Christian missionaries. That they didn't have, that they were the ones that interpreted the stories when they went up to the Norse, okay? And as I was reading through some of the, uh, and this is somebody who studied it. I mean, he actually, uh, he had a spontaneously detached retina in his eye um, and he was happy about it. 
because he had been trying to connect with Odin and with the original mythos. And he felt like his eye going into the other world was part of it. So, you know, woo. Um, but the, there's a line in the information that says, well, when the warriors get up to Valhalla, the Valkyries serve them mead. And I went, oh, somebody added that. <laughs> Somebody had to add that because that is not consistent with this archetype. You know, it's kind of like, well, you know, I'm going to I'm going to slay the other ones and I'm going to save you and I'm going to protect you and I'm going to do all the rest of that. And then here, would you like a glass of mead? That's kind of like, no, sorry, I don't I don't buy that. Maybe maybe now, they did some if more. Somebody's uh... out there. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Josh. Oh, no, maybe maybe they did some more editing during the panel of Nyasia into the, the mythos as well there. <laughs> yeah, they, well, I, I just, I read that and I'm I'm reading about this archetype of these, these complete female warrior badasses, you know, at choice and, you know, swooping down over battlefields and all the rest of that. And then taking them up to Valhalla and serving the mead. I'm like, energetically it's completely out of alignment with the archetype so i'm sorry but i i i'm not buying it yep yep Exactly. Exactly. It's kind of like, nope, sorry. No beer for you. <laughs> All right. I, that didn't come through. Can you repeat that? Because at least visually, it looked really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you. That came through. That was awesome. So um, if someone in working with the energy of the myths um, wants to work with what stopped. I, I'm, I'm showing the recording is still on. You stopped. Okay. But Josh and I still have little red dots. Mm -hmm. It was probably maybe it was that Klingon statement with all that energy. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want us to keep going? Is that what you said? Okay. All right. So um, what I wanted to say was, as you're working with the archetype, right, of strong female warrior energy, and do remember that, you know, there is no requirement that strong female warrior energy is limited only to women. You know, we all have our, our masculine and our feminine side. So um, if you're looking at that energy within yourself, it's warrior energy. And uh, um, and for Valkyries, it's it's from the, the female side, the feminine side. Um, but in terms of working with that energy, it's an opportunity to step into that power, that being at choice, that uh, complete owning of self, okay, is that they were, uh, when you interact with Valkyrie energy, you are interacting with it, it, it's something that Kelly said about the Klingon women, right? You're interacting with, whoa, right? Here I am. There's no, well, maybe, or gosh, I'm sorry, or did that hurt your feelings? I mean, and I'm not saying it doesn't, you can't be empathetic, but I'm saying that these, the Valkyrie energy is totally centered and powerful in and of itself, OK, it doesn't need outside approval. It doesn't need um, to seek approval for its actions. There's a role and a purpose and a choice and there's fairness and they act through the power of that. 
And that is the most important thing about that mythos is when you stand in that power. And I, I think back to, you know, just watching that one woman in the constellation, just grab that thing and, and basically, you know, take it and, and beat the crap out of it and, you know, open the door and kick it down the stairs. It was kind of like there was, it was so awesome to watch, particularly because I know her personally and that wasn't her personality, but with the Valkyrie energy in her, in her, it was no, you know, this bad behavior, this bad energy, this has no place here. And, and there was no question that she had the power in that energy to deal with it and to take care of it. You know, there was no, there was no stutter. There was no stop. There was no looking around for, is this okay to do? None of it. It was like, this is what needs to be done and I'm doing it. Boom. You know, it's, it's interesting so, when, when I, uh, when I started looking into this a couple of weeks ago and we were going to record, I, I was instra immediately a little intimidated by the energy right away. When I, when I started tapping into it, I was like, oof. You know, and and it's funny because I kind of get the same vibe whenever I look at Kali, right? Like I'm like, oof, am I ready? Am I ready for that kind of, you know? But when you were talking just now, um, one of the one of the things I'm working on currently is validation. So, you know that that not needing that external validation, just being in your power. That's a that's a beautiful archetype to work with for that. So thank you because I'm gonna I'm gonna utilize that once we get out of here. Maybe take a second look at that energy cautiously. <laughs> Yeah, the um, the you never, in my experience of dealing with archetypal energies, you never want to step into the ring as a wuss. And I'm not saying you're being a wuss. I'm just saying you never want to step in the <laughs> ring as one down. Okay, you you want to step in the ring as an equal. Okay, equal but different. Respectful. Okay, is is one of the things that Kelly knows about me for a long time is I can talk to just about any energy in any pantheon and they will talk to me. Okay. I get, you know, we have conversations. I've had conversations with Kali. I've had conversations with Anat, the, the berserker goddess out of the Hebrew um, Middle Eastern tradition. I've had conversations with, you know, all with some of the Orishas I've had. Um, but the point isn't that I'm worshiping them. Okay. It's that I respect them. And they are, and their energies and their, and their source and their people and their systems and all the rest of that. I respect them, but I'm also not going to be a plaything. You know, I am not your cat toy. <clears throat> I stand here in my own power. Okay. And will interact with you and I will respect you and I will honor you and I won't try and one up you because you know what, if you're trying to one up them, you're not standing in your power. You're trying to prove something. And the nice thing about the Valkyrie uh, archetype is that they aren't trying to prove anything. They are in their power and acting out their purpose, right? And that's, that's I'm totally respectful of that energy. Um, and it is, it's, it's unquestionable. I mean, it, it just is, it's the isness of that energy that um that you can be in and then just and like i said that that one lady who stepped into that representational energy she was just in her power no questions no excuses no no permissions just just there and it was awesome it was totally awesome to watch and that's what the valkyrie archetype that's what the valkyrie mythos brings to the modern mindset is an opportunity to step into that power and not and I've said badass before, but it's not about going out to be a badass, right? You're not trying to prove anything to anybody because if you're trying to prove it, you still don't own it. Okay. Owning it is completely different than trying to prove it, trying to justify it or any other reason. It just is. It's a, uh, to completely jump out of the metaphor. Uh, there's a line from an uh, Eminem and I am talking the rapper um, an Eminem song that says, the business of isness. And coming into our own like power that. and our own center and being at that place is the business of isness. I like that. Got anything so else? Kelly's uh, can you guys see me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we can I see you. There's... Yeah, we can see you. We can hear you. Okay. Okay, so, so I think you should just okay, hear you. Kelly's 
Well, then, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, Josh, did you have any other questions or up. observations or anything you no. wanted to bring oh, I, up? I could, I, I could probably ask you questions all day, but I don't any, think anybody <laughs> wants to listen to an eight-hour podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, uh, do, you have any, do you have any closing thoughts on the, on the Valkyrie? Um, the, I think what it really comes down to is, um, if you are not standing in your own power, this energy can feel very intimidating. Okay. The, this archetype of energy, it's like, kind of like, if you're a warrior on the field, am I being good enough or are they going to slay me? Right. You know, I mean, there, there's all this kind of, if you're not in your own power, right. Um, but what the Valkyries give you us is the opportunity to step into that archetype, is the opportunity to step into our own power, is the opportunity to be at choice. Because remember, that's what they do is they choose. It's their name means, chooser of the slain, right? Um, is that uh, when we are at choice, when we are in our power and at choice, we are at the center of making our lives the way we want them to be because we're not in reaction, we're not in collapse, we are standing in our power and we are choosing from that power. And we know that, and when you choose from power, doesn't mean you're gonna make the right choice all the time, okay? But it means that you'll make a choice, you take a look at it and you go, that didn't work, do something else, make a different choice. And you don't waste time beating yourself up about, oh, I made a wrong choice. Oh, I should have made a wrong right choice. If I'm actually doing this work right, I should have I should have chosen better. It's kind of like BS. We all make wrong choices, you know, and they aren't even necessarily wrong. We, we learn something out of them, right? You know, maybe you make a choice because there was a lesson in the middle of it. And now it's time to make another one and take another step in a different direction. And to the extent that we anchor ourselves to those bad choices and drag them along behind us we slow up our whole process of transformation and growth and all the things we want to accomplish in our life. So people on this podcast are in the business of isness and in isness it's, it's about the state of being. So um, embrace your inner Valkyrie, stand in your power, be at choice and don't drag bad things behind you. Remember we're all going to Valhalla. <laughs> <laughs> That was very eloquently put, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for sharing all of this today. This is a very powerful podcast. I think it's going to come to people right when they absolutely need it, as is tradition around here. So um, I don't know if we can get Kelly in on a Kellyism. All right. Uh, so do Kathy we have a did it, so you can't hear me. So. Oh. Uh, well, I guess that's all we have time for this week, folks. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into the Guide to Energy, Magic, and the Spirit World. I'm Joshua Radwin, here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all. Bye.